Well, hello and welcome to the WebMonkey Show. My name is Alex, and today marks the very first official uh, tutorial for the year 2020. Uh, today, I'm going to provide you with a tutorial on how you can transfer your WordPress website from a local installation to a live website. So there are many of you out there who would typically prefer to build your website locally on your PC or on your uh, Mac, and then once it's completed, transfer it over to a live site. Now, this is one, one of those tutorials that I should have done a long time ago, but just I kept forgetting or it kept skipping my mind. But finally, I have decided to do it because a lot of my students have been asking me to do this specific tutorial. So basically coming up, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do this. There's basically two ways how you can achieve this. You can either do this uh, manually where you don't use any plugins or you could decide to use a plugin. Now for the manual method, I'm going to show you everything from start to finish. While for the plugin method, I actually do have a video that I've already made a few months ago on how to use a particular plugin to make backups, transfer files, and so on. So I will introduce you to the video uh, when the time comes. So uh, without further ado, uh, sit back and I hope you find this tutorial useful. Let's get started. All right, so let's get started. And this is the local site I do have. Uh, it's the testsite.com. And basically, it's just a gallery site I built using a plugin. So I'm going to try and transfer this local site over to this live site, which is live.escopedia.com. So the very first step we need to do would be to import uh, or rather, I'm sorry, export our database that we currently have in our local host. So keep in mind that your WordPress website is divided into the database and then content. Those are the two uh, parts that make up your website. So we're going to have to transfer the files and then we'll have to transfer the database as well. So let's deal with the database first. Go to localhost and then forward slash PHP my admin. This will take you to the database section for your local installations. So in here right now, you can see that I do have a few of them. I've got digital, I've got uh, test, test base. The one for this site is actually test base. So I'm going to click on test base right there. All right, and then from here, I'm going to click on export over here. So this will bring me to this particular page where you can choose either a quick method of exporting or you can go with a custom uh, export, export. I prefer the custom export because in here you can actually have more control. So I'm going to go ahead now and choose custom. So let's come over here, make sure that all these tables are selected, all these tables in here. And then down here, where you actually have the object uh, creation options, go ahead and check this box that says uh, add drop table. And then also the if not exists less efficient, just go ahead and tick these boxes. That's pretty much all you need to do in here. You could also, already you've got the compression, if you're exporting a large database, I mean, if you have a lot of plugins installed, a lot of content, then you might want to come in here and choose either the zipped or the gzipped options. But the database for this site is very small. So I'm just going to go ahead and not choose any compression. All right. So with all that being done, I'm going to scroll all the way down here and simply go ahead now and hit the go button to export the uh, the database. So in here right now, I'm simply going to go ahead now and choose, I'm going to give this a new file name and I'll call this live.sql. It's going to my downloads folder. I'm going to go ahead now and hit save. And that's it. So we've successfully exported the database for our local site. Now for the content, I'm going to go ahead now and open up FileZilla. If you're not familiar with FileZilla, it's basically an FTP software. I created a tutorial on how to use FileZilla. Be sure to check the link in the description box below. It's right there. Or you could use another FTP software if you don't like FileZilla. There are other options out there. But I do have FileZilla. And I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to connect to my live site. All right. Let's wait for a few seconds. Okay. So in here right now, I've connected to my live site. To, my, to the sites I have live on the internet. I'm going to come all the way down here to the folder for the live.taskcopita.com. So this is right here, live folder. I'm going to open it. Okay, now 
over here on the desktop side on the left right here note that i am on my c drive and then i'm on inside the xamp folder so from the xamp folder i'm going to navigate now to the h docs folder and now in here you can see i've got the test site.com i'm going to go ahead now and simply transfer everything in here everything over so i'm simply going to go ahead now choose everything and then hit upload note that i'm uploading all the files to the root folder of my live website all right so this is going to take uh quite some time to actually accomplish uh this could actually take uh, up to an hour maybe even an hour and a half for everything to be completed so it really depends on the size of your database your connection speeds things like that so don't worry if this is taking quite some time you can see right here that I, I have queued up 291, uh, 290 megabytes of information. That's quite a lot. And also, if I actually scroll down here, you can see the number of queued files is over 6,900. And so far, I've made less than 100 successful transfers. So this is going to take quite some time. So what I'm going to do right now is to simply pause the video and resume once this has been completed. All right, so while we actually wait for this to be completed, there's a, a lot of things we can actually uh, do. So let's simply go to our browser and get some other things done. What I'm going to do right now is to connect to my hosting account. So I'm going to go over to SiteGround.com. I'm going to go ahead now and log in. Let's go ahead now and choose my account. And I'm going to go ahead now and log into the back end. So do the exact same thing if it's with SiteGround, Bluehost, whichever service you're using. So from here, I'm going to go over to the control panel, which would give me access to the tools that I've got with uh, SiteGround. So from here, from the control panel, I'm going to come all the way down here to where we have uh, my SQL databases. But I'm, I'm going to go ahead now and choose the MySQL database wizard. Basically, we want to create a new database for our live site. So I'm going to go ahead now and hit the database wizard. So from here, I'm going to go ahead now and add live as the name of my new database. Let's hit the next step. And then for the user, I'm going to name him a live use. <laughs> this would be the username live use and then a password. I'm going to go ahead now and choose the password for my live use user. Let's go ahead now and hit create user. And then from here, assign all privileges to the user. Hit the next step. And there you go. So we've successfully created a database with a user. We have a password. Now I'm going to go back to the C panel. And then what I'm going to do right now is to import the database of our local host, which we exported. I'm going to import the database into the new uh, database that we just created for our live site. So to do this, let's go back to the control panel. And from here, I'm going to go to PHP my admin. All right, let's go there. Ba, ba, da, ba, ba, ba. Let's wait for a few seconds. OK, so over here to the left, I'm going to go ahead now and choose uh, the new database I just created, which is uh, live. You can see right here, it's live. So I'm going to click in there. And then from here right now, I'm going to go ahead now and hit import. All right. So from here right now, I'm simply going to go, go ahead now and choose the file, the database that we exported earlier. Uh, I'm going to go over to my downloads. Uh, where is it? All right, this is right here, live.sql. So I'm going to go ahead now and choose that one. Let's hit open. And that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead now and hit go and wait for the database to be transferred. In the meantime, let's just make sure that this is still running. <laughs> this is going to take quite a while. We've done over a thousand. We still have about uh, close to 6,000 files to be transferred. Wow. That is a lot. All right, let's go back in here. All right, so as you can see right now, it says import has been successfully finished. 81 queries executed. Awesome. Now, note that I'm still inside the live database for our site. 
what I'm going to do right now is to go to the WP options table. So look in here, look for the WP options table. It's right here, as you can see. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click in there. Now, there's two things we have to change, and that's going to be the URLs. Note that the site URL here says localhosttestsite.com, and then home also says localhosttestsite.com. Keep in mind that because we've imported the database from the local host, everything is going to be just like with the local host, the URLs, the usernames, everything. So we have to change the URLs of this to point to our live site. So where you have site URL, I'm going to go ahead now and hit edit. Okay. And then in here, if I let's just do this, I'm going to go ahead now and just grab this URL, live.taskupita.com. Let's copy that. Let's go in here and I'm going to change this to live.taskupita.com. Let's go ahead now and hit go. So update that. And then we can do the exact same thing for home as well. Let's hit edit. Let's go back in here, paste that and hit go. So there you have it. We successfully updated the URLs for the site URL and as well as the home for our new website. Now we're just going to wait until this transfer is actually completed. So I'm going to pause the video right now and I will resume once these uh, uploads have finished. Welcome back. And as you can see right now, we've finally been able to transfer all the files from the local site over to the live site. It took about almost two hours for this to complete, but it's finally done. Okay. So, so far, so good. We've done a lot of things. We've successfully transferred all the files. We've created a database for our live site, but we've also imported uh, the old database from the local site. Now, if I go to my website, live.taskcomputer.com, and I refresh, I'll get this message saying, error establishing a database connection. Now, the reason why we're having this error message is because even though we created a database for the live site, we've not actually updated the credentials in a particular file. Now, this file, you can use uh, Notepad++ or any other FTP uh, software. You could also use FileZilla. But this particular file I'm talking about is going to be in the root folder of your live site. You can see right now on the right, um, I've opened up live, which is the folder for my live uh, .com site. The file I'm looking for is going to be the wp-config .php file. This is the file that contains all the information about our database. So I'm just going to go ahead now and connect using Notepad++. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, I do have a tutorial on how to use uh, Notepad++. So be sure to check the links in the uh, description box below. So I'm going to open up wp-config.php, this particular file. So over here, now you can see that we have this information. We have the database name, uh, the database user, the password. So we need to change these. Remember that we imported the database of our local site. These are the credentials for the local site. So in order for the database to reflect our live site, we need to update this with the uh, database we created for the live site. Now this database, remember, uh, we did so on the uh, cPanel. If I go to my SQL databases, it's going to be right here. Uh, I'm married 618 underscore live. This is it right here. So remember, right, this is the database we created, all right? So the user is Amerit618 underscore live use, while the database name is Amerit618 underscore live. So I'm going to copy this. Let's go back to Notepad++. We're going to change the name from test base. And we're going to paste Amerit618 underscore live. That's going to be the name. And then for the user, let's do the exact same thing as well. I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to grab the user. Let's go back to Notepad++. Let's change the username to that. Okay, so we've updated the database with the new changes. Let's save this. And now I'm going to go back to my browser. Let's go back in here. Let's refresh the page. And now you can see that we have now established connection. 
and you're also seeing the exact same files on a live site as we do on a local site, but it's not completed yet. The next thing we have to do right now would be to log in. So I'm going to go ahead now and log in into the back end. We we'll have to make sure that all the uh, links are working properly. So I'm going to log in with the credentials from the uh, local site. So let's log in. All right. So here's what you do. You want to go ahead to your settings. You click on general and then just come down here and simply uh, save the changes. You're not actually making any changes, but just go ahead and save that. Let's go over here to permanent links as well. And then you can choose whichever one you want to go with. I'm going to go with the post name in this case right now. Let's go ahead and save the changes. And that's pretty much it. So you could go now to your site and just take a look around and ensure that nothing is broken. All the images are showing. Okay, everything seems to be working as it should. But just to make sure, one thing you could, one final thing you could do would be to go to your uh, PHP My Admin, and you could go to the table or the database for your live site. In this case, right now it's Amira six one underscore live for me, and then I'm gonna go to SQL right in here. I actually do have this code, which I'm going to copy. You can pause the video and uh, take a look at this particular code. Uh, make sure that this one right here where you have the HTTP live, that's going to be the URL of your actual site. So you can just uh, write all this down. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. I'm, I'm going to come in here and paste. What this does is it's simply making sure that the URLs for my table for my live site is set to uh, live.taskpeter.com. So once this is done, I can go ahead now and hit go. Okay. So you don't, this is something that you may not necessarily need to do. You could do this if you discover that, Hey, there are certain links broken or something doesn't seem to be quite right. Uh, you could try that just to make sure that, uh, nothing is broken on your site. So that's pretty much how to transfer files and your database from your local site over to a live site. Now, if you're looking to use a particular plugin to do your transfer instead, I would highly recommend the all in one WP migration plugin. I actually do have a tutorial about this on YouTube. You can simply search for, or you go to my channel web monkey and then simply search for the all in one, uh, WP migration plugin. You could use this to transfer files from your local site over to your live site. So if you want to use a plugin, I would highly recommend you check out this particular tutorial. I'll put the links in the description box below. So that's pretty much it for learning how to transfer files from a local site over to your live site. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to post them in the comment section below. My name is Alex. It's been a pleasure. I will talk to you next time. Bye bye.